Sign up to the SBR Network and use your free daily bet points to earn real-world prizes. Click on the page and start winning now. Hi, welcome to SBR Foreign Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are previewing round one of the 2014 NBA playoffs with Joe Duffy from Offshore Insiders right now, and we are going to discuss uh, the Charlotte-Miami series. Joe, thanks for being back with us. No, thank you, Peter. All right, Joe, uh, give a little plug for uh, OffshoreInsiders.com. Uh, do you usually do well in the NBA playoffs? Yes, year 27, where my picks are going to be public going back to the score phone days, and we've had some great NBA playoffs. Uh, Longtime clients know about our bounce back theory. Our new clients that I'm sure are going to join us from SBR videos, you're going to see in our analysis some of the specific parameters of what that is. And, and yeah, there's so many good intangibles in the NBA playoffs that don't apply during the regular season. That's why we've done very well in the NBA playoffs over the decades. All right. Congratulations, Joe Duffy, on all that long-term success. Charlotte and Miami. Miami, of course, is the uh, the number two seed. And this series matchup, a little bit disappointing to me. I was uh, hoping to get uh, a first-round matchup, Charlotte against the Pacers, and then pound the hell out of Charlotte every game. Now, though, they're going up against the Heat, and Miami is one of those teams that, uh, you know, kind of like uh, takes it easy for stretches of the regular season and absolutely turns it up in, uh, in, the, in the postseason. And that has been reflected in their ATS record uh, in the first two rounds over the last two years. They're actually 14 and six against the spread in the first two rounds over the last two years and seven and two against the spread in round one. So they're not exactly a team, even though they're gonna be a big favorite, you know, at home every game and a favorite on the road too. Uh, they're not exactly a team I'd be thrilled to, uh, to bet against. Charlotte though, 47, 32 and three against the spread on the year, a clearly undervalued team. Uh, so maybe we just avoid these uh, spreads altogether. And on the series price, not really bettable, right? Miami minus 2000, Charlotte plus 1250. Is Miami maybe the side of the value there? Yeah, this is another one of those where I can make absolutely no argument to, to, to go for Charlotte as a big long shot. You know, I know that sometimes maybe the smart thing to do from a marketing standpoint is to predict a ridiculous upset. And then if they don't, you nobody will remember it. And then if they do, I can come back and say I was a genius. But again, unless now we do know that Dwayne Wade, he's had his share of injuries yeah. this year. So maybe he's more hurt than we realize. Can he come back completely for the playoffs? And, you know, obviously, if somehow, you know, LeBron James breaks, breaks his ankle in game one, but that's the only possibility of Charlotte pulling off of an upset here. Uh, Miami, they should definitely win this series. I'm not going to say dominate. I mean, they could win it in four straight. I wouldn't be surprised if they win it in four straight, but four straight close games because the Pacers, I mean, I'm sorry, Charlotte, I should say, plays a tough defense, mm -hmm. and the Heat like to grind it out, play that half court so it's one of these cases where Miami could actually dominate them and only win games by like six and eight points. So Miami could win this in four, but yet Charlotte could wind up covering all four games. All right, so maybe uh, you touched on uh, what might be the most uh, bettable way uh, to look at this series, which is uh, take unders, right? I mean, uh, the total for game one is 189 and a half, which is a low total, of course, but not super low. And, uh, you know, like you said, you know, Miami, during the regular season, sometimes their defense was a little um, lazy and they were actually an overtrender on the year. But when they're really playing at their top level, they're a very defense-oriented half-court team, and Charlotte is as well. And uh, so, you know, maybe we take uh, unders in this series. Yeah, no, Charlotte, they hold teams to 3.3 points below their normal average. In my opinion, that's even a better statistic than the points per 100 possessions, how good a t defense a team is relative to what their opponent's normal average is. And they hold teams to 1.1% shooting below their normal average. And again, I probably say it every single video in the NFL, or I'm sorry, in both football and basketball, handicapping tools is much more about pace. And Miami loves to play that half court, walk it down when it, in the postseason. They really slow it down, uh, grind it out. So I do think it is going to be very low scoring, not so much because of, you know, the lack of uh, Miami has plenty of offensive firepower, but they slow the pace down. And that's what Charlotte does as well. So I can't see either one of these teams running it. And I do think the under will probably be a very good play. All right, I agree with you. So uh, we agree that the uh, the series line is basically not bettable. And as far as the spreads yeah. are concerned, probably gonna be laying off uh, either side in all games, right? Because we wouldn't want to bet against either Charlotte or Miami spread wise. Um, no, I would lean a little bit more toward the, the statistics that you were talking about, Miami being very good in the first two rounds the past couple of years. Keep in mind that 
Two years ago, they clearly had something to prove. LeBron James, the big question mark was, can he win a championship in the postseason? And even last year, was it a fluke? You know, one championship, but for LeBron James to be considered among the all-time greats, he's got to do it again. Dwayne Wade, there are now some questions about his health. So I think that the Miami's motivation to make statements in the mm -hmm. first round are a little bit different this year than they were the previous two years plus. We really don't know how much they're going to get out of Dwayne Wade. I think that Eric Spolster will try to pace him and cut down on his minutes in the in the, in the first round. So, no, I, I do think that Charlotte's probably the good bet spread-wise. Okay, interesting thoughts. Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Thanks so much.